In our last video, we looked at the problem of finding the integral of a rational function where the denominator was a product of linear factors. We now move on to look at the general case. In particular, we look at the situation where the denominator contains a factor that's an irreducible quadratic. So the most simplest, uh, the simplest kind of irreducible quadratics are ones of the form x squared plus a squared. So let's begin by looking at this simple case and how we find these integrals. Note that x squared plus a squared is an irreducible quadratic. It has no real roots because the roots are plus or minus a times i. Okay, so recall these two formulas that we'll use frequently in this discussion. And these are both easily obtained by standard integrals and substitutions. So the integral of 1 over u squared plus a squared is 1 over a arctan u over a. And the integral of u over u squared plus a squared is 1 half log u squared plus a squared. So if you have any um, concerns about that, you can uh, just do the substitution necessary and you'll get that answer. So let's have a look at a simple example to start with. Suppose we have a rational function like 5x minus 3 over x squared plus 4. Then we can just split it up into two uh, terms of the above form. So if we take out the x term, we get 5x over x squared plus 4. And then we have a term minus x squared plus 4. So using these two formulas, that just gives us 5 times 1 half log x squared plus 4 minus 3 times 1 half uh, arctan x over 2 plus c. So that's an easy case. Uh, of course, in general, it's going to be much more complicated. In particular, x, the, there are irreducible quadratics that aren't of the form x squared plus a squared. In general, there will be a real uh, x term in there, such as x squared plus 2x plus 2. So what we need to do is complete the square to get the irreducible quadratic in the form u squared plus a squared. Let's see how we do that. Okay, so recall this formula from high school algebra. x squared plus bx plus c is x plus b over 2 squared plus c minus b squared over 4. So what are we doing here? We're picking this b over 2 so that when we expand out this term, the x term is bx, and this the x squared term is x squared. So we've got both of these first terms here, but we also have a b squared over 4, which so we have to subtract that off from the constant term here to get back to c. So this is a standard procedure. It's called completing the square. And this polynomial is irreducible if c minus b squared over 4 is positive. So for instance, x squared plus 2x plus 10. If we do this formula, b is 2, b over 2 is 1. So we get x plus 1 squared plus 10 minus 4 over 4, and that gives us 9. So let's have a look at an example where we would use this. So suppose we, have, we want to integrate 7x plus 2 over x squared plus 2x plus 10. Then we complete the square on the bottom. Now, instead of splitting it up as before in, as a x term and a constant term, what we want to do is separate out something times x plus 1, because now this integral here will be of this form, where u is x plus 1. So what we have to do is write 7x plus 2 as something times x plus 1 minus a constant. So the obvious choice, of course, is 7. 7 times x plus 1, that gives us a 7 term, so we have to subtract our 5 to get back to 2. So we just do a little algebra to arrange it like this. Then we separate the two terms and use these uh, formula up here with u equal to x plus 1. And of course, dx is du in that case. So that gives us 7 over 2 log x plus 1 squared plus 9 minus 5 over 3 arctan x plus 1 over 3. So 
So that's how we deal with uh, rational functions where the denominator is a, just a um, irreducible quadratic. Let's see what happens when the denominator is more complicated. It's a product of different terms and we have to use partial fractions. So let's introduce by example the rule for in this case. So the rule is that it if we have an irreducible quadratic in the denominator, on the right-hand side, we write a term with bx plus c on the top. If it's linear, we just have a single constant a. But if it's an irreducible quadratic, we have to have an arbitrary linear function, bx plus c. So that's how we would set up the partial fractions in this case. Let's go through the, the uh, steps of solving for this. We multiply the top and the bottom by this thing, x plus 3x squared plus 4. Oh, sorry. Before we do that, um, let's look at some other examples about setting up. Okay, if the denominator is x plus 3x squared plus 4x squared plus 1, okay, so now we have a linear and two irreducible quadratics, then for each of the irreducible quadratics, we have a term like this, bx plus c over x squared plus 4, dx plus e over x squared plus 1, but it's still just a over x plus 3 because this is linear. And then finally, uh, if we have a power of an irreducible quadratic, then we're going to need a term for each of the um, smaller powers of x squared plus 4. So we'll need a bx plus c over x squared plus 4, and a dx plus e over x squared plus 4 squared. So let's have a look at an example where we solve for these constants. So we've got 5x squared plus 6x plus 2 over x plus 2x squared plus 2x plus 5. We set it up like this, a over x plus 2, the irreducible quadratic has a bx plus c on the top. We multiply through by the denominator. What then happens? We get uh, the x plus 2 cancels out here. We get a times x squared plus 2x plus 5. And the x squared plus 2x plus 5 cancels out when we multiply this. And we just get bx plus c, x plus 2. The next step is to gather together all the terms in x squared, all the terms in x, and all the constant terms. And you see there's an ax squared here and a bx squared in this term. So we get a plus bx squared. Similarly, there's a 2ax here, there's a 2bx here, and a cx. So we get 2a plus 2b plus c times x, etc. <clears throat> then for these to be equal, 5 has to equal a plus b, 6 has to equal 2a plus 2b plus c, and 2 has to equal 5a plus 2c. So we get these equations. And this process is called comparing coefficients or equating coefficients. So we have this set of simultaneous equations which we need to solve. So how would we do this? Well, one just has to kind of look at it and see what the quickest way of getting the answer is. Here we have 2a plus 2b, and here we have a plus b. So if we subtract twice this first equation from the bottom equation, from the second equation, uh, we're going to eliminate the a and b and get an equation for c. So let's do that. So we get 6 minus twice 5 equals 2a plus 2b plus c minus 2a plus b, which is c. So that tells us that c is minus 4. And then we can go back up, put in minus 4 here, and that tells us that uh, 10 is equal to 5a, a equals 2, and then you put a equals 2 up here, we get b equals 3, etc. So we kind of substitute back in and get the other values for a, b, and c. Let's put this all together into a slightly different problem and actually do the integration too. So let's look at this problem here. Uh, the denominator is now x times x squared plus 1 squared, so we're going to have to set this up as I described earlier in the following way. This, uh, the integrand we're going to write as a over x, because this is linear, bx plus c over x squared plus 1, 
plus dx plus e over x squared plus 1 squared. So when we have a power, we have to have a term like this plus a term for all the smaller powers. So when it's squared, we need a term for x squared plus 1 and a term for x squared plus 1 squared. So again, we multiply through and solve. So let's multiply through first here. Notice the x's cancel out. We get a times x squared plus 1 squared plus bx plus c times x times x squared plus 1, etc. And then we, okay, now again we want to sort out the terms. So let's kind of expand everything out a little bit. Uh, expanding x squared plus 1 squared, we get x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 1. Looking at the b term in this expansion, it's b times x squared, x squared plus 1, which is this. The c term looks like this. And we get a dx squared and an ex. So now we kind of have it expanded. Now we regroup it by gathering together the x, x squared, x cubed, and x to the fourth terms. So for instance, there's an x to the fourth, there's an a times x to the fourth and a b times x to the fourth. So we get a plus b here etc. I won't go through the rest of the steps. You should be able to see that if you just take your time. So again, comparing the coefficients, the constants are the same. a is equal to 1. c plus e has to equal minus 1. 2a plus b plus d should equal 2, etc. So we get this set of equations. And notice that's, that we're already given a couple of the constants, a and c. So we just can kind of substitute back to get the rest. A is equal to 1, so over here putting in 1, we get B equals minus 1. Similarly, C is equal to minus 1, so E is equal to 0, etc. And so eventually we get this list of solutions for our problem. So now we can go back to the original problem and rewrite the integrand in partial fraction form and solve. So, as we discovered, if we put in our constants, we get that the integrand is equal to this. So the integral, oh, sorry, um, this integral here, the second integral, by the kind of technique that we did on the very first slide, is 1 half log x squared plus 1 plus arctan x. This integral, we do a substitution u equals x squared plus 1, and uh, we find that the answer to this is minus 1 over 2x squared plus 1. So putting all this together gives us that the integral we're after is log x minus a half log x squared plus 1 plus uh, minus arctan x minus 1 over 2x squared plus 1 plus c. So quite a complicated result for a fairly uh, innocuous looking rational function. Well, let's look at another issue that arises. Um, all of this partial fraction technique only works when the degree of the numerator is bigger than the degree of the denominator, as smaller, sorry, than the degree of the denominator. If the degree of the numerator is bigger, we have to do long division to get back into a situation where we can apply the partial fractions procedure. So let's give a quick example. Of that. So the general formula for this is that when we do the long division, we get uh, an answer plus a remainder. So P divided by Q is equal to D remainder R, and the degree of the remainder should be less than the degree of the divisor. And so this is something that you will have seen in an earlier algebra class that you may not particularly remember. Let's look at this example here. So we have to divide x cubed plus 2x minus 1 by x squared plus 1. So to get x squared, we have to multiply by x. So we put x up here. We multiply this by x, write it down here, and subtract it. Subtracting that eliminates the x cubes and leaves us with an x minus 1. This is of degree smaller than x squared plus 1, so we have to stop here. So the answer is that this thing is equal to x remainder x minus 1, or 
x cubed plus 2x minus 1 over x squared plus 1 is equal to x plus x minus 1 over x squared plus 1. So whenever we have a rational function with the degree of the numerator at least as big as the degree of the denominator, we first begin by using long division to get it back into the, the problem term, back into the form where we can apply partial fractions. So let's continue and uh, complete this problem. So suppose we have, we want to find an integral like this, then we perform long division as we did on the previous slide and get this result. And then we go ahead and integrate this, again, using the techniques that we were outlined on the first slide. We split this up into x over x squared plus one minus one over x squared plus one. And we get a final answer of x squared over two plus a half log x squared plus one minus r ten. Of course, in general, the problems will be harder than this. Uh, I'm just keeping it simple so we can see the outline of the procedure. Okay, so let's talk, let's summarize what we've learned about integrating rational functions. So a rational function is one of the form p over q, where p and q are polynomials. The first step is to check whether the degree of the numerator is bigger or smaller than the degree of the denominator. If it's bigger, we apply long division to get it into this form, and now r has smaller degree than q. The next step is we factor q of x into a product of linear and irreducible quadratic polynomials, which we can in theory always do uh, over the real numbers. And then we find the partial fractions decomposition for r over q for each power of a linear polynomial that occurs in q of x, something like x minus alpha to the m, we have a whole set of terms of this form of constants over x minus alpha, x minus alpha squared, all the way up to x minus alpha to the m. For each power of a quadratic polynomial, we have one of these terms, and now we have an a plus bx on the numerator. And again, we have one term for each smaller power of x squared plus bx plus c, all the way up to m. And then once we've done that, we solve for these constants, and then we uh, do the integration using one of these formulas that we've discussed before. And the final one that I would add is this formula that the integral of x over x squared plus a squared squared is minus a half one over x squared plus a squared. There are more complicated problems that arise, but I will just leave it there for today.